how am I going to raise up these children? Not by might, not by power, by my spirit. How am I going to live in harmony and peace with my wife? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. How am I going to go to the next level in my job, in my business, in my career, in my studies? Not by might, not by power. God is going to give you insight. He's going to give you unction. He's going to give you direction into how to deal with it. It's only the Holy Ghost will help you to do good. Because some people, you look at them, you think, why am I supposed to do good to this person? After all they've done, how they've treated me. People have felt, I've been weary in worshipping God, in serving God, in, in the passion to read the word, the passion to preach Jesus, the passion to live for God. It's all been dwindling because of all the things around us. But we believe the snare is broken and it's a dawning of a new day where our passion for the Lord is coming back. We will receive a fresh oil, fresh unction this morning in the name of Jesus. to this brief message anointed and appointed someone say anointed, anointed. and appointed anointed. amen and amen and amen let's look at um genesis 1 27 to 28 we'll take a few scriptures just to see what this means the anointing you have is because you have an appointment you have an assignment to do while here on this earth you're not just living on your own you have been given a grace you've been given an anointing to do what god wants you to do in the name of jesus in genesis 1 27 to 28 it says so god created man in his own image Already you can see you are created in the image of God. So never look down on yourself. Don't let anyone look down on you. You were created in the very image of God. You were appointed to be like the, our master. Amen. He says in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So even though the woman might not have been physically there, you were in the man. So that's why I'm speaking to everyone here this morning. Verse 28 says, and God blessed them and God said to them, someone say, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Can you see the appointments you've been given while you're living to be fruitful? Not just fruit of the womb, but that is there. Not just fruit of the womb. All you lay your hands on to do must be fruitful because God spoke it. Amen. All you lay your hands on to do will multiply. I can't hear your amen. The prayers have started already. All you lay your hands on to do, you will replenish the earth. You will subdue it. You will have dominion. And this verse says, dominion over the fish of the sea, which is why men have been able to build boats and ships. We can, you think only fish can swim in the sea. We can also be on the water. You know, God gave us wisdom to build these big structures that we can be on the water. Amen. Over the fowl of the air. Oh, birds, you think you're the only ones that can go in the air. We have our planes. We have our helicopters. We can also be in the air. Over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And you know, it's no longer moving with horses, but we're now moving with cars. We're now moving with so many things. God has given us that wisdom. And that wisdom he gave us from the beginning is still there and will be resurrected in us in Jesus' name. Anointed and appointed. Someone say anointed and appointed. We can't talk about anointing without talking about the Holy Spirit. And isn't it amazing this month of June has been declared the month of the Holy Spirit. It's, a, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. We can't do anything in our own strength. We've tried and tried and tried. We've tried and tried and tried. But let the Holy Spirit begin to kick in in your life. In the name of Jesus. 
anointed and appointed. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. Why have we received this anointing? We know this scripture very well. And it reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me and is upon you. Amen? Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He says bind up, not to increase the brokenhearted, but bind up to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. That's an appointment, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them, what is it? Beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for every spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Can we see, appoint them that mourn in Zion. Zion is a place where God is. In the house of God, people come mourning. They come in pain. They come seeking for answers. Sometimes you come here depressed, discouraged, but because you come in your best Sunday best, people think you're happy. But you just don't know what someone is going through. You know, but the appointment we've been given is to help people for that spirit of heaviness to be lifted. As you hear the word of God, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It could be just one word you hear in the whole service and that will change the course of your life. I pray in Jesus' name today, may you receive beauty for ashes. May you receive the oil of joy for every morning. Whatever your morning, as you receive the oil of joy, that morning will disappear. Receive a garment of praise. Put on a, remove that spirit of heaviness. Put on a garment of praise in the name of Jesus. These are the appointments we're given, which is why he says that he has anointed me. You have been anointed for such things. To preach good news, good news, good news to people. Amen. We are appointed to do certain assignments. Certain, everybody has their own assignment. Amen. But we are anointed to fulfill those assignments. We can't do it in our own strength, as I rightly said. You can, sometimes you look at yourself and say, how did I get to where I am? We're talking about Father's Day. Yes, and I'm glad it was mentioned. that Sometimes your biological father or the father that you have in your life might, not, might have cut short, a little bit fallen short of what you expected for a father. That's okay. We're all human. Amen? We're all human. But we have a heavenly father never leaves us, nor forsakes us, strengthens us. He's the one you need to look at. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Thank God for the men they've given us in our, in our lives, but never forget you have a heavenly father. Amen. I know growing up as well, I saw most of my mom, not my dad, you know, he's passed now. And I, I really felt that I don't have a father. There was a time my mom was even upset with me. What do you mean you don't have a father? I said, I don't feel it. I don't feel his love. You know, and that made me become strong and very independent, as you see. <laughs> very independent. I can do things. I don't need any man around me. I'm fine. You know, that made up my mind. I'm not even going to get married. I don't want to get married. What am I getting married for? What, you know, I just, you know, the enemy can play on your emotions, can play on your mind. You know, I'm just being honest with you. And I just felt that's it. You know, I didn't really see it. But God had a plan. And God has a plan for you and I. God has a plan. It's not over. The story is not over. So when, when it was time... For God to tell me, okay, have you finished your agenda? Now let me just tell you, you are getting married. And this is the person you're marrying. I said, no, Lord, I'm still young. How can I even think about marriage right now? I'm doing my A-levels, you know. But, you know, God spoke to my heart. This is why I said that you have an anointing in you. The Spirit of God in you. Allow Him to, to direct you. Amen. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. The anointing you have will help you hear what God is saying at all times. So even at age of 19, I could hear God telling me, this is your husband. You're not getting married to him at 19, but you need to know who he is. And you need time because you've decided to go on your own agenda. I need to train you how to be a wife, how to be a, man, a woman that can stand by your husband. So five years later, we got married. And to God be the glory, 33 years on today, we are still married. But that's the grace of God. 
you know, a lot of times we want to say, if not, because, you know, if my father was around, if my mother was around, if my friend was around, if I was living in UK, if I was living in US, if I was living in Nigeria, things would have been different. No. Wherever you are, God is there. And he will turn things around for his glory in Jesus' name. I don't know who that word was for because it's not here. I believe it's for someone. But just know that if God said it, that settles it. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Don't let any man or any woman discourage you. Amen? So what are appointments that we are given in life? I'll just run through a few because of time. What are some of the appointments that we are given in life? Well, today being Father's Day, one of the appointments is of a father. A father. First to your home. It's a shame so many fathers today, they leave their home and go around looking for other homes. You know, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. We must have a primary assignment to our home, care for our wife, care for our children. You know, a lot of ministers, unfortunately, have, have missed it in the sense that, oh, first of all, God, then ministry, then family. That's the wrong order. It's God family ministry family is your first ministry amen is your first ministry don't leave your family and say you're running after the church the church is full of people it's full of families so don't leave your family and say god and then ministry children wife when when you're ready you can join me no we should be growing together in ministry amen we read that scripture i think earlier fish ephesians 6 verse 1 to 4 Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So children have a part to play as well. I think scripture, what was read is, fathers should not um, provoke. I mean, some children are enough to provoke someone, you know. So please, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Amen. When it says in the Lord, there's some things, some parents, maybe they're not saved, will want you to do something. If it's not in the Lord, then you're permitted not to do that thing and say, I can't do that. I fear God. Amen. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment we promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It shouldn't be the children that are teaching the, the father what it is how to live a life in Christ. We need to work hard, work hard, so that we can always be on top. Amen. Just like the, the um, drama we saw that the father was, didn't have a clue, you know, said go to Google. I know Google, you can check everything on Google nowadays. Everything, just check Google. I was trying to do something on Instagram. I'm totally, I'm not conversant with Instagram. I said, how do you do this? How do you do this? Oh, right, good. So it can be handy, but certain things, go to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In our time, we didn't have any Google. We didn't have any internet. <laughs> you have to go to the library. Do libraries still exist? How, how many children have been to a library? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, very good. Oh, lovely, lovely. Oh, excellent. How many have not been to a library? Forget, I mean, school library. I mean, outside you're at home and you want to go to the local library. How many have not been? It's okay. Don't put up your hand. <laughs> Libraries are good, you know. It's a, it's a place where you can sit down and study. You know what you're there for. But if you're at home and the TV is there, your phone is there, the laptop is there, it's so easy to be distracted. So please, let me, let's bring back libraries. Amen. Hallelujah. Where was I? <laughs> so the first appointment, appointment of a father, we know. That's the first primary assignment God has given. Amen. The second appointment is to do good. Someone say to do good. Yes, we are all been given the appointment to do good. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. So it wasn't just the appointment. He had the anointing to do it. Anointing to do it. He said how he anointed him with what? The Holy Ghost. It's only the Holy Ghost will help you to do good. Because some people, you look at them, you think, why am I supposed to do good to this person? After all they've done, how they've treated me. You know, people are not fooled. Sometimes you think everyone loves you. No, not everybody loves you. But you still remain the same. That's what love is about. You still remain. You owe it to God. Amen? You remain the same. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. 
He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and God was with him. That is the key word. God is with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? Amen. Let's be nice to people. Lend a helping hand. Be a blessing. You know, sometimes you think, I keep giving, giving, giving. What am I? You will receive in Jesus' name. It reminds me of that scripture in Proverbs 11. Wonderful scripture. Proverbs 11, please make note, 24 to 25. He says, there is that scattereth, yet increaseth. You're just giving here, giving there, giving, giving, giving. You say, well, why do you keep giving, 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 giving? He says, you will increase, yet you increase. But there's he that withholded more than his meat, and he tended to poverty. You don't want to share, you don't want to give. Every time, I don't have, I don't have, I don't. You will not have. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. No matter how small it is, let us give. It shall be given unto you good measure. That scripture says, The liberal soul shall be fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. You water someone, you'll be watered. You'll be refreshed in the name of Jesus. So the first appointment is of a father. The second one, to do good. The third one, appointment to the world. Sorry, Mark 16 15 says and he said to them go ye into all the world someone say all the world preach the gospel to every creature no matter where you are the world is your oyster wherever you are that's your ministry that's your pulpit on your job that is your pulpit that is your world in the film industry, that is your world. In the music ministry, that is your world where you minister the love of God. Amen. Everywhere you go, you represent Jesus in your business. Don't think, oh, we finished Sunday. Good. Let me remove my clothes. Now I can be who I am. <laughs> You're in Christ, you know, and he's the hope of glory in your life. So wherever you are, you represent Jesus. And let your appointment to the world be to preach the good news to preach salvation, to preach healing. Because we can see this world is gradually, gradually rounding up, rounding up. People thought during the time of COVID that we're in the tribulation. Now you've realized we're not in the tribulation. But the days are moving very close. So we need to be tight in our walk with God. Amen? Maybe you've backslidden, you've been watered down in your faith, in your walk with God. It's between you and God. Now's the time to get the place, get your house in order. Someone say, get your house in order. And that is your life. You sort yourself out first. What would it, you can just imagine all this time. I mean, I got saved at the age of 12, 13. I will now miss heaven because of one thing. After all these years, you might as well just go and enjoy yourself. So to say, quote unquote, but when you're a Christian, that is the biggest joy. That is the biggest joy. There isn't joy in the world outside of Jesus. With Jesus, you have inner peace. You have inner joy. Amen. So appointment to the world is so important. Wherever you are, you represent Jesus. So in a nutshell, every appointment given to us is to build, to encourage, to enable, to strengthen, and to freshen people. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not in our own strength. You are anointed for every appointment. Zechariah 4, 6, which we know. He answered and spake unto me. This is the word of the Lord to, you can put your name there, to joy, saying, it is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. How am I going to raise up these children? Not by might, not by power, by my spirit. How am I going to live in harmony and peace with my wife? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. How am I going to go to the next level in my job, in my business, in my career, in my studies? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And when you do that, verse 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain? What is that thing that looks impossible? What is that thing that's looked like it's been so stubborn? You can't get past this mountain. It's so huge. It's so high. You don't even know where to start. Before you put your name again, it shall become a plain in the name of Jesus. He said, you shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. The Holy Spirit 
will give you insight into how to handle every situation and circumstance in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says in 1 John 2, 20, that you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. What is it that you've come with today that you thought, I'm just going to go away with it again? No. God is going to give you insight. He's going to give you unction. He's going to give you direction into how to deal with it. You might be taking a step. This is summer now. The children are rounding up school. Holidays are getting ready. You want to go on holiday. Just, just take time out to say, Lord, this next phase of my life, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? I've been going through this challenge. Or you know someone going through one challenge or the other. Lord, we ask for wisdom. The anointing you have given me. You said I have an unction from the Holy One. And I know all things. So I'm looking unto you, Lord, for help in the name of Jesus. Sometimes God directs you to people. Because of time, I won't go through it. But if we look at the account of Philip and the Ethiopian man in Acts 8, 26 to 40. person was reading and God directed Philip to that person. He didn't have a clue what he was reading. He didn't understand what it was. But Philip was there at the right place. May you be at the right place at the right time for someone. There are many times you make a phone call or somebody just comes to your heart. And you just say, ah, let me just call this person. Or let me just send an email. And you call the person, say, ah, you don't know what this phone call has done to me. You don't even know. There was a time someone called me. And, you know, being a pastor is not very, it's not all the time that someone will call you. You know, you're expected to call everybody, which is fine. It's, it comes along with the ministry and, it, and it's an honor and a privilege. So this person called. I was still waiting. Ah, what is it? What do you want? You know, anything I can do to help? I said, no, 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 no. I just called just to say hello, just to check on you. I tell you, that just made so much. That meant so much to me that, wow, okay, Lord, thank you. You know, and I was feeling a little bit down at the time. But, you know, as I said, everybody comes here smiling, jovial. You just don't know who is who, what is biting under the legs or anything. So, so please, anytime someone comes to your heart, it doesn't take a second to pick up the phone and call someone. Send an email, send a text, just thinking of you, prayed for you, all is well. It makes so much difference. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can never make a mistake being nice to someone. Amen. You don't make that kind of mistake. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You don't make a mistake being nice. You know, you might get it wrong that the person wore blue and you didn't realize they wore red, but you were still nice to say you still look good anyway. Hallelujah. So sometimes, as I said, God directs people to you. And sometimes people come to you, you know. And God, we pray, even as God has given us this anointing, He gives us wisdom. The case of Solomon. Remember what happened in 1 Kings 3 9 because of time. He prayed for discernment, and I believe we're going to continue to pray for wisdom and discernment in all our decisions. And not too long, two women, random women, prostitutes, came to him with this very, very unique case. I mean, I'm sure if he had Googled it, I don't think it would have come up. <laughs> I don't think there's only been a, ever been a case of two women fighting over a child, and you don't know what to do. It's, oh, no problem. Let me just cut it, you know, <laughs> in two. Before you realize the real person will say, it's okay, let her have her. You know, I remember, uh, I don't know if it was uh, something I heard or read of two women that were fighting. They were fighting, they were fighting. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Okay, I said, okay, no problem. The one that is ugly should sit down on the chair then. <laughs> None of them felt they were ugly. They said, okay, okay, it's all right. We're both fine. We'll, we'll leave like that. Amen. So sometimes people come to you and God will give us wisdom. Amen. We've been given anointing. If there's a time we need fresh oil, it's now. Because we've been weary. We've been weighed down. Everything is gloom, doom. I was watching the news. I'm still hearing COVID. The cases are increasing. I said, Lord, whose report do you want to believe? Lord, give me fresh oil. Give me fresh oil to, to get that zeal back. That zeal back. People have felt, I've been weary in worshipping God, in serving God, in, in the passion to read the word, the passion to preach God. Jesus, the passion to live for God, it's all been dwindling because of all the things around us. But we believe the snare is broken and it's a dawning of a new day where our passion for the Lord is coming back. We will receive a fresh oil, fresh unction this morning in the name of Jesus. You are appointed and anointed to reign victorious, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth. 
And we decree this morning, decree and declare in the name of Jesus. As you raise your hand, I prophesy over your life. This morning, you will receive a finishing anointing. I say finishing anointing for every appointment that God has given you to accomplish. Whether in your home, you will, you will complete that assignment of marriage. You will complete that assignment of business. You will complete that assignment of studies. You will complete that assignment of job. When it's time to move to the next level, you will complete it. Zechariah 4.9 says, The hands of Zerubbabel, the hands of Joyce, the hands of just mention your name, have laid the foundation of this house, and your hands will also finish it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. What a great joy to bring you this message today. I trust that God spoke to your heart and I believe that the word of God you've heard will profit you, will prosper you, and will perfect all that can sense you in Jesus' name. For those who have not given their heart to Jesus, I want to challenge you to open the door of your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am, a sinner in need of a savior, save me now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my savior. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin, you were buried, but on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as that prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, guess what? God heard you and you are saved. So I rejoice with you for this new beginning. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured and you can be helped in your work with God. If there's any way I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to write me or contact the number on the screen and it will be my pleasure to respond to you. Well, until next time when I come into your home, you keep on winning because God is on your side. You are destined to win.